Um, and kicking us off, we have Olivia. She is a community organizer with the Tenant Network Rhode Island. Um, amazing human being, pleasure to be in her life. Um, without further ado. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Olivia, or at least that's the name I'm going by tonight for the public and the airwaves. Um, I'm a community organizer with Tenant Network RI, as well as a labor organizer and a communist. And I didn't know what to really, you know, uh, Emily asked me just a day ago if I could speak. Um, and so I wanted to speak just a little bit um, about a tragedy, obviously. You know, we're all here to mourn the loss of um, queer folks, maybe within the last year or even in recent years uh, that we're thinking about, and especially across the country. Um, you know, there's been a lot of social isolation, obviously, in the last year, and it's definitely been hard on a lot of our folks who have been struggling for a very long time. And never mind that we are all, you know, at least many of us here are queer people, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and so on. And um, and so, yeah, let's clap for us. But, uh, but you know, we, we are, we're, you know, we've all been struggling. Uh, various times in our lives um, with our identities, whether they're sexual identities, gender identities, and so forth and so on. And um, so I wanted to sort of speak about that because, you know, in, la in the last few years, there's been a lot of um, wins, you know, in the last decade for queer folks um, in this country. Um, but our fight for liberation isn't over, um, you know, uh, our liberation doesn't just end with assimilation uh, into straight hetero society. And so I want to speak a little bit to that from a communist perspective. Um, it's going to maybe be a little hippy dippy at times, um, but I hope you can bear with me. So I'm going to read a quote from Marx and then I'm going to read a thing from my communist organization's uh, new book that recently came out that's called Organizing for Autonomy. It's out on Common Notions Press. Um, and it's about uh, kinship and uh, free, loving relationships. So uh, this is a quote about what communism actually is, according to Marx. So to quote Marx, communism is for us not a state of affairs which is to be established, an ideal which, to which reality will have to adjust itself. We call communism the real movement which abolishes the present state of things. The conditions of this movement result from the premises now in existence. So what he's saying with that is that really our movements for liberation sort of, you know, they are the movement towards a better world, a free world, a free communal world where we treat each other as humans in a humane and communal manner. Um, and that those conditions already exist today and there's a possibility to struggle towards a better and, you know, just world um, here if we can, you know, fight off uh, what oppresses us in those structures. So um, leading on to that, I wanted to talk a little bit about something that a lot of people don't necessarily think about when they think about communism or think about, you know, even just what a free form of love and uh, kinship could be. Um, because it really sort of, it's something that we are all striving for in our daily lives and capitalism uh, really tries to push it back. And I recently lost a coworker uh, who was really struggling with the fact that through the pandemic, he had to work through three jobs. He was a gay man and um, you know, he took his own life and it was really sad. Um, and I just really felt that if he didn't have to struggle, you know, he never got a break during the lockdown. His job still just made him work. Um, he never got to have unemployment. Like right now, like I'm the richest I've ever been because, you know, like we were able to get extra unemployment and stuff like that because of Bernie and stuff like that. And he's not even a communist or whatever. But, you know, my friend Josh, he wasn't able to like spend any time, extra time with his partner or anything like that. And that was a big thing for him. He, he was so, so stressed all the time. And I really think that if he had just been able to, like, live his life the way he wanted to be, be respected by his family, be able to be with his partner, not have to be constantly worrying about where the rent was going to come from, uh, that he'd still be here with us today. So that's why I want to speak about something that hopefully instead can 
inspire us. So here goes. And it might be a little theoretical and I'm sorry, but I'll try to break it down. Free love and free partnerships. Communist kinship relations break with past histories of partnerships as a means of obtaining economic benefits or as transmitters of oppressive hierarchies based on privilege and exploitation. You know, so back in the day, often uh, women would be forced for, through economic means or through families to, you know, uh, marry into another family and things like that. Or they were means of controlling people that are gender or sexual uh, minorities. And communist kinship relationships do this by delinking partnerships from economic entitlement. Communism ends the dominance of the traditional heterosexual partnership between men and women as the only acceptable form of intimate relationship. Historically, that has been an involuntary and socially imposed relationship based on unremunerated labor. So, you know, historically there's been a lot of, you know, just housework and all this other labor in the community sphere outside of the traditional workplace that women, you know, engage in. Um, and other uh, sexual and gender minorities have had to engage in to basically uphold the patriarchy. And so going on, um, you know, through forms of sexual exploitation and compulsory uh, monogamy in which women are often confined to the home, responsible for giving birth and raising children and providing uncompensated support for men's labor power. In contrast, communism upholds the feminist goal of the free partnership in which all partners share equitably in the everyday responsibilities and joys of intimate relationships. Partners may choose whatever form of union they wish whether that's with a man, a woman, or anything in between or beyond. And, um, and no benefits shall be accrued from such a voluntary union between consenting partners other than the, those decided autonomously by the partners themselves. Within communist social systems, uh, we can unleash what the revolutionary Alexandra Kalanta referred to as the winged eros, of love comradeship experienced by people rooted in cultures of sensitivity responsiveness and the desire to help others communism envisions opening spaces for such experiences with all members of a community indeed such love comradeship is autonomy within solidarity reinforced through practices of mutual aid responsiveness to the needs and desires of others, and sen sensitivity through active listening. In a communist social system, the accepted norms of sensuous, sexual, and erotic relations will be based on free association. Free time, conceived as the temporality of autonomy and measure of real wealth, is a necessary precondition for the meaningful generalization of free love. The spatial temporality established in communist society will create the conditions for new forms of sensuous, sexual, and erotic experience. Within this context, an expanding realm of freedom becomes truly a realm of play, of the free play of individual faculties. And so what I really think that this is interesting, because it speaks of it maybe in a way, even in my group's book, of you know per se something in the past, but I want to bring it back to Marx, is that in our everyday struggles, we are struggling for these free relationships, whether they are, you know, to not be judged by society for uh, loving same sex or same gendered people, um, or of the types of, you know, family relations that we build with each other. You know, a lot of us as queer people choose our own families because our original birth families, you know, don't support us. And so I just thought this was really interesting because to me in my experience as a queer trans woman uh, in my experience with this gay man that I worked with because really at work, you know, a lot of the people I work with and a lot of young people today are more and more open about their sexuality, more and more open about their gender identity and we were really like family to each other. And so, yeah, um, that's really what I had to say uh, on such short notice. <laughs> Thank you for listening and um, keep up the fight. Thank you to Olivia. Um